Hey guys, I am so excited to make these freezer meals. This is a pre-recorded class, so if you want the freebie with all of the recipes, the shopping list, the labels, click the link in the description below and I'll send it to you via email. Let's go ahead and get started. Hey, thanks so much for joining me. I'm Kelly from The Family Freezer and I am excited to share 10 gluten-free freezer meals in one hour. That's right, start the clock because we are making these meals. <laughs> All right, who out there is a planner? I am speaking your love language with this freebie. I'm calling it a freebie because it's completely free and I will be sending it to you via email as soon as this class is over. So check your email. Inside, you're going to find super simple, super easy recipes, all naturally gluten-free, and a full shopping list that is organized by aisle at the grocery store, so it makes it so easy to shop, and the labels for your meals. Now, you don't have to, but I am like an organization freak. So, so of course, I bought these stickers. I printed them on the sticker labels and stuck them to my bags ahead of time. You don't have to do that. You could just print them on regular computer paper and tape them to your bags, or you could even write the cooking instructions with Sharpie. No stress, but these are included in your freebie. And if you can't find it for some reason, check your spam, search your email for the family freezer, because I promise you I'm going to send it. Look for this after class. Now, I know a lot of people are here, are members of my site, Freezer Meal Pro, Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Um, if you are new, welcome. I'm so happy to meet you. I hope you can stay until the very end of class because I'm going to share a discount in case you want to join that membership site. But I want to go ahead, go ahead, get started. Let's jump right into recipe number one, which is chicken fajitas. I love this recipe and I'm going to show you what I do to make it. So the very first ingredient is a green pepper and a red pepper sliced. We're starting with those veggies. We're gonna make healthy gluten-free meals today. I already diced these peppers. Believe it or not, I like to talk. <laughs> I like to tell stories when I'm cooking and I like to share tips. So to save time, I just slice these ahead of time. But we're adding our fresh peppers and then we're going to add an onion. Here is a time-saving hack for you pre-diced onions. This bag was $1 at my local grocery store. They are diced, they're sold in the freezer section. It cost $1 and has about three and a half onions in it. We're going to use it for all of our recipes today so that when we're done, all of the onions will be gone. So I'm, I wanted to show you the bag, but I'm gonna dump them into this bowl. And every time a recipe calls for an onion, I'll take about a cup of that and add it to the freezer bag. Let's go ahead and add, like I said, about a cup. I typically do add one full cup, but since this is three and a half cups and we need four onions today, I might do a little bit less because why open an extra bag? Let's make this one bag stretch. Then we're going to add a tablespoon of honey. Go ahead and measure that out. And fresh lime juice. You do not need to be writing down these recipes. What I'm gonna do is send you that freebie at the end of class. So this is your time to like relax, put your shoulders down, take a deep breath. This is fun for you. Imagine you are watching TV. You're watching the Food Network, <laughs> okay? Food Network, call me. <laughs> so you do not need to stress right now. Don't be scribbling down notes on a piece of paper or note a note on your phone. This is your time to just watch me do all the work. You can make the meals later after I send you the recipes. This is our fresh lime juice. It smells really, really good. And I am using a fork to just kind of squeeze out the juice. You don't need a fancy juicer to make this meal. This is also less, that, less dirty dishes that put in our dishwasher later. So I'm adding that fresh lime juice. And I wanna point out that every single recipe you see me make today is frozen raw. Literally, raw vegetables, raw meat, sauces, seasonings, spices, added to the bag. No cooking ahead of time. <laughs> Can I hear like a collective like, woo woo? <laughs> we need like our New Year's Eve um, horns to blow because we're that excited. But 
They're all raw. That's how I can make 10 in an hour. That's what makes them so quick, so easy to make. And then they cook for the very first time when you're going to eat them. So they don't taste like leftovers. They don't taste like a traditional freezer meal. They taste great. I even have, okay, Linda messaged me. I joined last year, attended your demos online. Hey, Linda, if you're here today, your recipes are delicious and easy. Love it. Linda must love those raw recipes. And I'm going to share some other stories like this throughout class so that you can see it's not just me who loves these meals. They're working for other people too. And just kind of encourage you that, um, you know, you're going to love them too. Let's see what else we need for our chicken fajitas. Seasonings. All right. Here's what I have in this little bowl. Chili powder, cumin, paprika, garlic powder, crushed red pepper flakes. Very flavorful dish. And the only other thing we need is the chicken, which I'm going to add at the end. I'm going to make these meals in an assembly line, adding everything else, the beans, the canned tomatoes, the veggies, spices. And at the very end, I'll go through and add all of the meat. So it won't be sitting out at room temperature. It's still in my refrigerator. We are ready for recipe number two. That's how quick these meals are going to come together. And the second recipe is an Italian pork roast. Let me grab that bag. Okay, so we need a can of diced tomatoes. I even opened my can ahead of time. There was a time when I taught a class and my can opener broke <laughs> like 10 minutes before class. Luckily, it worked out. I had everything opened, but we're not leaving that up to chance today. <laughs> I got them all open. All right. We have our diced tomatoes. I need to add Parmesan cheese. Most of these recipes are dairy-free as well as gluten-free. However, there's a little bit, so I'm going to point them out. This is one, is your grated parm. If you are eating dairy-free, you can just leave this out. It's fine. Otherwise, add it. It's really good. I think it's very flavorful. I'm just adding a half a cup. And then we need some olive oil. I am going to use the same measuring cups, the same measuring spoons throughout class. That way we have less dishes, save that extra time. It's totally fine. We're adding two tablespoons of olive oil. And our seasonings, which are parsley, basil, oregano, garlic, powder, and pepper. This is all gonna go into your pork roast. I want to tell you a little bit more about me. So if you are brand new, thank you for joining me. It's so nice to meet you. I'm Kelly. Like I said, I have five kids. <laughs> My baby just turned three. So they're ages three to 11. The younger two are with my parents right now. So my house is never this quiet, <laughs> like literally never. And my other three kids are in elementary school. They're doing virtual school right now. So they are at home. They have just promised to keep it quiet while I'm teaching this class. But really, they're the inspiration for a lot of these recipes because I started making these meals about nine years ago now. I had two daughters at the time. I had a newborn and I had a two-year-old. And I remember feeling like I had no time. Like between doing work, try, taking care of my kids, doing laundry, trying to keep my house like semi-clean, it just felt like our days were totally full to the max. And I'm really good at organizing. So I thought like, what could I organize to save time and immediately thought of dinner. And I had been making these crock pot recipes. And I realized that if I added them to my crock pot raw, why not add them to a bag raw, freeze it, and then cook it later. And it was literally a light bulb moment where just like everything changed. I made a list of five recipes. I had a whole fantasy of what my life would be like then. Because if I wasn't cooking dinner, I could go for a walk. I could work out. I could maybe sit down with my husband after work and just see how his day was. I could take my daughters up the street, go to the park. It was like this whole fantasy played out. So I made those five meals that weekend and we ate them the next week, like all five in the same week. And it was a game changer, not only because it made those dreams come true that I had an extra 30 minutes or an hour at dinner time that I didn't have to be cooking. It also changed my life because I started sharing them on my blog. And what I found is that other people needed these meals too. Everyone needs a shortcut, right? 
I mean, I still need it today. That's why I'm still making these meals nine meals, uh, nine years later. And I had shared them on my blog. I had a blog post that went viral. Over 8 million people read that post. I ended up writing 20 cookbooks, um, made over a million dollars in cookbook sales. Like this became a full-time job for me and my husband. I'm just like so grateful to see like how these recipes and this freezer method of freezing everything raw has just like taken over and changed so many people's lives. We've been on BuzzFeed, foodnetwork.com, todayshow.com, Costco Connection. Like really it's amazing because these work for people and I know that they're going to work for you too. Let's move on to recipe number three, right? Let's make some more meals. Recipe number three is black bean and rice soup. This is a vegetarian dish. This is a good one. Actually, let's see if this is vegan too. Yes, this is a vegan and vegetarian dish and a dish that meat lovers will love as well. It almost tastes like chili. It's really good seasoning. But we need black beans. These are drained and rinsed. I'm adding two cans. Then I add a diced red pepper and a, um, a cup of frozen corn. Okay. Is anyone wondering about these stands? <laughs> these are called Jakari hands-free baggy racks. I do not work for Jakari. <laughs> I bought mine on Amazon. Uh, I will put a link in your freebie. If you want to buy them, you can. If you don't, you do not have to. No pressure at all. But they are, they're really nice for keeping your bags upright when you're filling them. Uh, just an option, just throwing out what I like, what I use, what I love. We got a red pepper. We have onion. Another cup of our diced onions. And I'm going to add dry wild rice. Now, remember, I'm sure you're used to this because you're eating gluten-free. Make sure you get the gluten-free rice. This is a wild rice blend that we like. It says right on the front, gluten-free. And I am adding it dry, uncooked. <laughs> Do you believe me? Are you going to email me and be like, was that really uncooked? Because yes, it is. Everything is raw. You can trust me. I have tested this and retested this. I have made thousands of freezer meals. My family has tested them. They've been on my blog. They've been on my membership site. They've been in my cookbooks. Other people have tested them too. And the 10 that we are making today are the best of the best. So they're going to work out. You're going to love them. Give them a try. And we need our seasonings. This is a really good seasoning blend. So I have chili powder, cumin, garlic powder, oregano, salt, pepper. That's it. But you, you wouldn't believe this is a lot of seasonings. It's a very, very flavorful, delicious meal. Everybody loves this, loves this recipe. And then the broth in the soup is vegetable broth. I'm going to wait to add that the day of cooking. It says that in the recipe. And why I do that is, one, it makes this easier. It's not a frozen solid block. You can add the broth, but this will be a frozen solid block that you'll have to thaw a little bit before putting it in your crock pot or instant pot. If it, there's no broth, it's just easier. All you have to do is loosen it from the bag and you can dump it in. I'll do a cooking demo later, but it just is better. And if you do end up cooking it in the instant pot, that broth helps it come reach pressure, no burning. I'll tell you more about that. But this can be cooked in the crock pot or instant pot. All these recipes can. Some of them even have oven and stovetop directions. So, so much versatility. You could literally eat these like every single day of the week and it would be just like freshly prepared meals. You might think you can't eat from your crock pot that often, but we have lots of options here. Recipe number four, Cool Ranch shredded chicken tacos. I love this recipe. This is probably the most popular recipe on my blog. Like, believe it or not, people love this. It is made, so it's chicken. It's like a shredded chicken when it's done. But the seasoning is equivalent to like a taco seasoning packet and a ranch seasoning packet. However, I have my own seasonings. So this tells you how much chili powder, how much paprika, cumin, salt, pepper, etc. It tells you exactly what to add. Instead of using those store-bought packets, you can make them yourself. What I'm adding now is some red wine vinegar. You do not need extra liquid. You're going to be saying, how much chicken broth do I have to add? 
I already know because people email me. Don't worry, just follow the follow the recipes. Red wine vinegar, and then we have olive oil. If you're making it in the Instant Pot and you need to add a little bit of chicken broth or water, that's fine. I actually wrote, wrote that on the recipe. So you can look at the recipe for all my best tips, cook them exactly like I tell you to. If you print the labels, it says on the label, crock pot instructions, Instant Pot instructions, however you can cook them. Now, we don't need any extra liquid. We have the oil and vinegar. All we need are seasonings. So let's see. Uh-oh. Might have these out of order. <laughs> okay. What I'm going to do is I think I have these seasonings either out of order or not set aside. So I will just add them later. What I'm going to do is I will add these. They're listed on here. If you're ever making a recipe and you don't have an ingredient, you're like, oh my gosh, like I forgot my frozen peas or I don't have, I actually am out of parsley and I didn't know it. What I do is like circle that on the label if it's printed or even with a Sharpie on your bag, just really write like add one cup frozen peas or add seasonings from recipe. That's how you remember to do it. I'll do it before I put this in the freezer later, but I don't want to have to measure out. It's so many good, like flavorful seasonings. I don't want to spend too much time doing that because I want to make sure we can get through all 10 minutes. Let's move on to recipe number five. It is Latin chicken. And I love this recipe because it is a one pot meal. No side dishes required. All of the recipes we're making today do have side dishes listed on the recipe. So if I eat it with rice, it says make a cup of rice. You can put it in your rice cooker. I have one that's programmable. It's probably $30 from Amazon. And I just press button. It cooks it perfectly. But this, it does not require any, um, any additional side dishes because it includes two sliced red peppers. I sliced these ahead of time. I'm going to go ahead and add them. I don't know if you can see them. They look really good. Fresh. Two red peppers, a can of black beans. Okay, also a quarter cup of chicken broth. There we go. Seasonings, and I'll, then I'll um, cut up my sweet peppers for you. So our seasonings that we're adding are dried cilantro, garlic powder, onion powder, salt, and pepper. Very simple, very delicious. And our sweet potatoes, this is all going right in the bag. These are raw sweet potatoes. You need about a pound, so two medium. They actually gave me two large. I ordered my groceries online. So I think I'm only going to add one of these because I would guess that would be a pound. I'm going to add one to this dish. Just bear with me while I'm going to quickly just uh, peel it over my sink with the disposal. Yes, we have a raw sweet potato here going into our dish. And all I'm gonna do is cut it into bite-sized pieces. They don't need to be perfect. If you wanna make meals quickly, what I suggest is like not stressing. They don't need to be the same size. Everything doesn't need to be diced the same. No stress. I want you to have fun making these meals. When you're making them at home, please put on some music. <laughs> That's what I do. I like to listen to music when I prep meals. I had some on even when I was uh, slicing up the peppers ahead of time. Just make it fun. That makes it way more enjoyable. And then you're going to have all these dinners ready for nights when you don't have to cook. Ten nights. Like, can you imagine having your freezer stocked with ten meals, not having to cook dinner for ten nights? Like, what would your life be like? What could you do with that time instead? That's our Latin chicken. We are good. I'm going to move this back and move on to recipe number six. 
We are moving right along here. This is our honey sesame chicken. And now I want to say crockpot recipes get a bad rap. People think they're bland, they're mushy, they all taste the same. I am here to tell you that is not true if you use the right recipes. These are them. Like use ones that are tried and true that other people can tell you are, are good, taste great. I promise these are good. I can tell you, Becca messaged me the other day. Thank you so much for the classes in Freezer Meal Pro. I have been using freezer meals off and on for years, but the planning can take a lot of time. Sometimes recipes do not turn out. I know yours will and they taste great and be healthy the first time. Again, thank you so much for the recipes doing all the planning leg work for me, Becca. Thank you, Becca. Like, thank you for messaging me because then you know these are working for you too. I'm glad that they are. I'm glad you're not having those flops because that is the worst. Like that has happened to me so many times. You make a meal, you're excited, and then it's a flop. And then you have to throw it away and order pizza or like kind of scramble at the last minute and it ruins your night. I don't want that to happen to you. I want you to make these tried and true recipes that are going to be amazing the very first time you make them. This is honey sesame chicken. It can be cooked in the crock pot, in the instant pot. I made this in my Costco class. People loved it. What we need to do is add honey. I'm adding half a cup of honey. Here's our half cup. And then I'm going to add soy sauce. I looked at my grocery store and just bought a gluten-free soy sauce. A lot of the soy sauces will say gluten-free on them, but that's an ingredient you have to check. If you've been eating, glu eating gluten-free for a while, I'm sure you already know that. But if you are preparing these meals for someone else with a gluten allergy, celiac disease, you do want to read every single label. Make sure that whatever you are putting in these meals is gluten-free because gluten can be hidden in things. You might think it's just bread, but it's not. It could be in chicken broth. It can be in spices, soy sauce. You can also substitute coconut aminos. Let's say you have a soy allergy. Coconut aminos also can be subbed one-to-one -one for the soy sauce. But otherwise, I like the flavor of soy sauce, so I'm going to use the gluten-free soy sauce. My family does not have a gluten allergy or intolerance, but we love these meals. So these I think will work for everyone. Um, but I really was careful when I was buying these ingredients just to make sure they would work for everybody. I actually have a, one of the cookbooks I wrote was a gluten-free one where I, where I worked with the recipes and a specialist in gluten-free diets. And she pointed out like every little thing that might have gluten in it. So I have a lot of experience reading the labels, being careful. Obviously, if somebody has an allergy, you need to be extra careful when you're preparing meals for them. Ketchup. Okay, we need a quarter cup of water. I do not use a lot of water in my freezer meals, but I like it in this recipe because it just brings down the sodium in the soy sauce just a little bit. So it's not too salty, but still tastes great. All right, we need olive oil. And then I want to tell you a story. Zoe had messaged me. It's hard to pick. Like a lot of people send me emails and messages. Thank you. If you're here today and you have, thank you so much. Like I love reading your emails. I love reading your Instagram messages. You really motivate me to keep going and just to know that these are working for other people. Zoe said, thank you for being a great resource. I attended your live class earlier this week. Was so happy for the coupon code. I went out and bought the ingredients for 10 meals right away. We have them because we're a small family, especially in worrying times like these to have 20 meals ready in the freezer in about two and a half hours was great. Everything has tasted amazing. It's expanding my horizon. I never would have used certain cooking vinegars or spices before. Now I can see how delicious they are. My husband and one-year-old love the food too. Thank you. Thank you, Zoe. I love that she pointed out that since she's only cooking for her husband and her one-year-old, they split their meals into two bags. That's the easiest way. If you're only cooking for one person or two people and you don't want to make six servings, a lot of these bags have six servings. You can just make all six and eat the leftovers for lunch. I recommend that. <laughs> that is a great lunch, like a homemade healthy lunch. But if you don't want to do that, just split them into two freezer bags. There was a time when I was making meals for my grandparents. They were living at home. I took 10 recipes, split them into two bags each for a total of 20 meals. And then I gave them to them and they just used a smaller crock pot. So two to four quarts. 
a smaller crock pot, same cooking time. So that's a really easy way to have less um, servings and also double the meals. So that would be a really easy way to modify these if you want less servings. Let's see what else we need to add to our honey sesame chicken. We need the seasonings, which are sesame seeds, garlic powder, crushed red pepper flakes, and pepper. All right, we're done. Recipe number seven. This is a simple crockpot taco soup. Really good recipe, my kids love this. This is like a fan favorite. And we add black beans, one can drained and rinsed, one can of kidney beans drained and rinsed, a jar of salsa, make sure it's gluten free. One of the things I love about these meals is they are really easy to make in an affordable way, to be budget friendly. I mean, is anyone else trying to save money right now, cut their food budget? Like the struggle is real, it's never ending. This is an easy way to do it. I read just this week, the average American household spends about $3,000 a year eating out. I'm sure my family spends more than that. I have five kids, I, I'm not uh, proud to admit, I had even ordered lunch for three of my daughters today because I was teaching this class. We spent $40 on DoorDash. To order lunch. So obviously we don't do that very often and like we don't have to do it for dinner when I'm making freezer meals. These can save you so much money. I bought the ingredients for these 10 meals at my local grocery store and spent $128. No coupons, nothing. I wasn't even shopping sales. You can do that. Think how much more money you could save if you're really trying um, to save money. You can, I've done that over the years, but $128 for 10 meals. That works out to $12.80 per meal, $2.13 per serving. Yes, I did the math. Yes, I care about the rounding to those pennies. <laughs> Anybody else love spreadsheets, keeping that budget, figuring out the numbers? I am a huge numbers nerd. I love them. $2.13 per serving. You can save so much money with these meals. We find that we save an average of $200 a month when we are planning ahead making these meals instead of kind of scrambling at the last minute. So not only am I saving time, saving my sanity, saving money too. Teresa had messaged me so along the same lines. I became a member after watching one of your videos. I hate cooking. I wasn't good at it. And now I make stress-free dinners that my family loves. Plus I just spent $127 yesterday for eight or nine meals, which is a huge savings for us. And there's no food waste. I have thrown away so much food that I bought to make a recipe, didn't get the chance to make it, and it went bad, or had so much left over and no one ate it. Don't you hate that? I, I don't want that to happen to you. I want you to plan ahead. I want you to make these meals. I know you can do it. Thanks for messaging me, Teresa. That's great. I, isn't that awesome? She's doing a good job. All right, we have our salsa. Let's add some frozen corn. Let's go back to our bag of frozen corn and add... I would consider adding the entire thing, but it might be a little overboard. I'm just gonna add, oh, about a cup. Maybe I will. All right, let's do it, guys. <laughs> I'm gonna add whatever is left to this. And then we talk about having no leftovers, right? I'm gonna take the little bit left and add it to my, let's see what it was, my crock pot black bean and rice soup. So that way our entire bag is gone. We don't have this half rolled up bag in our freezer that might be leaking in there and have corn kernels. And then we need seasoning, another very flavorful, delicious meal, this taco soup, and it calls for chili powder, parsley, garlic powder, onion powder, pepper, salt, dill, cumin, crushed red pepper flakes. That's a tongue twister. Crushed red pepper flakes, paprika, oregano. Very delicious, not super spicy. I even have a note here it calls for a teaspoon of pepper, but I say decrease it to half a teaspoon if you want something super mild. If you're cooking for someone very sensitive, um, you can decrease that to half a teaspoon. But otherwise, not spicy, just delicious. You want this to taste good. We don't want those mushy crock pot meals. We're not dealing with everything that tastes the same. We want good ones that you're actually gonna make again because that's the secret to like eating healthy, saving money, sticking to a diet. Um, you have to make meals that 
taste great. Like that's the bottom line. So what I want you to do is make these meals that taste so good and then save time and money at while you're doing it. The only thing left here is beef broth, which I'm gonna add the day of cooking again so that it doesn't take too long to thaw. So we have extra liquid if we are cooking in the Instant Pot. Recipe number eight. Oh, I have to show you my mom's apron. So I have been wiping, you know, back up. I've been wiping my hands and my measuring spoons on this. I always wear this when I am prepping meals. And it all started because my mom and I have prepped a lot of meals in the past. We've got together to prep 28 meals. We made 40 meals once. <laughs> and what she saw is I was using all these paper towels and like grabbing at them, probably used almost a whole roll or grabbing, trying to get the towel when I needed it. And she thought, well, why don't I just sew the towel onto the apron? And like all of a sudden I became a huge apron person. And now I always wear this when I'm prepping meals. My mom ended up opening her own Etsy shop. I'm gonna put a link in your freebie because these are really popular. She's only one person. She can only make so many aprons. If you want one, please buy one today because she, I know she'll sell out but she'll restock too. Like she made a bunch last month and sold out, but then she's loaded more in this, this month because she enjoys sewing and she's so good at it. So very helpful. Let's make our steak Italiano marinara. Fancy, but tastes great. It's the last of our onion. Okay. I'm just going to even use my hand here to just get like, I wash my hands before class, obviously. I'm just gonna add the last of this onion, make sure all of it gets used. And then we need some baby spinach, about two ounces, which I consider to be two handfuls. Yes, it's raw, going right in here. You know what you can do? So there's still some spinach left in this bag. If you're not going to eat this this week, put this in a freezer bag and freeze it. And then you can just add it to soup because I don't want this to go bad. You know, it gets like slimy in the fridge if you don't use it. Put it in a freezer bag. Next time you make soup, just dump that frozen spinach, raw spinach, right into your soup. It's so good. That's, that's what I'm gonna do with the rest of this bag. We need a can of crushed tomatoes. Attempting not to splash and spill all over myself. And our seasonings are Italian seasoning, basil, garlic powder, salt, pepper, crushed red pepper flakes. I hope you can see that I care about making these meals healthy. Obviously I want them to taste great, but I want them to be good for you too. I want you to feel good about eating them, good about serving them to your family. That's why I'm including fresh vegetables like this baby spinach, all those peppers that I had cut up ahead of time before class even started. I'm not adding root beer. <laughs> you sure root beer is gluten-free? I don't care if you want an occasional root beer, go ahead and drink it. I don't think anything's off limits. If it's within your diet, it won't make you too sick. But if I can eat healthy as much as I can, if I can make my family a healthy dinner, I think like everyone wins. It makes me feel good. I always feel good when I'm eating healthy. So all my recipes really are healthy. I'm not trying to add condensed soup. You'll see a lot of that on Pinterest. And it's not that I think these foods are necessarily off limits because we don't have any like dietary restrictions, but I just think it's better if we can be eating healthy most of the time, then those little splurges aren't so bad. Steak Italiano marinara. Let's move on to number nine. Okay, Heather had sent me a message. I joined Freezer Meal Pro recently after watching a class. I've made so many meals for my husband, who's a commercial fisherman and away from home six months a year, which means lots of unhealthy food. Well, not anymore, thanks. Thank you, Heather, great job. This is such a good example of how freezer meals can work for like anybody, whatever their situation, like how cool that you're making them for your husband who's a fisherman. I love that you've made them work for you. Good job. Our recipe number nine is our chick chickpea tikka masala. This is an Indian recipe. There's a variety here. We're not eating pot roast every night. <laughs> it's not soup every night, although I love soup. Crockpot soup is good. I really wanted to show you how versatile these meals can be and how you could eat them as much as you wanted to because they taste great. Now, I added a can of tomato sauce. The recipe called for two 15 ounce cans. I just bought one. I got the 30 or 29 ounce. That's basically two small cans. 
We also need a cup of frozen peas. This is another vegetarian and is this vegan too? Oh no, it has honey in it. You could maybe omit the honey or use something else if you were making this for someone who's vegan. But this is a vegetarian recipe, but it's very hearty because it has chickpeas in it. If you have someone in your family who's like a big meat eater, or maybe you are, maybe you like meat, you're trying to eat even extra protein. You can put chicken in here. I've made it. It's great. You, you could, I had a member of Freeze Meal Pro who said in the comment section, I did half chicken, half chickpeas. I thought that was genius. Like, aren't people so smart? I love reading comments when people can share how they have like improved recipes and when they try them. But this is two cans of chickpeas. Like I said, you could totally substitute chicken if you prefer. What is next? Oh, coconut milk. This is unsweetened coconut milk. If you've never bought these cans of unsweetened coconut milk, your life is going to change because they're really great uh, re addition to recipes. Add a little bit of sweetness. It's some liquid, so flavorful, dairy-free, vegan. We got it all here. And then we add a little bit of honey for sweetness. Two teaspoons. I'm just going to do a little less than a tablespoon because if we haven't used a teaspoon until this point why should why get out the teaspoon <laughs> why make one more dirty dish the great thing about these freezer meals is you're only going to wash these once not only are you not cooking again another night you're not doing these dishes all again every single night it's one time and i'm just going to add these to my dishwasher when i'm done with class today our seasonings are curry powder garam masala onion powder garlic powder salt all of these ingredients can be found at your local grocery store. If you haven't cooked with curry powder before or garm marsala, masala, am I saying that right? This is your chance to buy it. I think you're going to have a lot of this stuff on hand, a lot of the spices and anything that's new is worth buying. Like you're going to love it. It's so fun to try something new, especially when it tastes delicious. So that's fun. Isn't that, I just was thinking about that for the new year. Like how fun is it to try new things or like experiment? So I hope you have something in these meals that maybe you haven't tried before, a new vegetable, a new seasoning, uh, maybe a new, different flavor combination. Just kind of push you outside your comfort zone and have a really good experience with it so that you want to do it again. This meal is done. We are on to number 10. Ooh, this one almost slipped on my hands. This is why I love those baggy racks because <laughs> you do not want that to spill on the floor. Let me show you these bags. Oh my gosh. I like need somebody here tapping me on the shoulder. Hello, Kelly. These say the family freezer on them. These are our own bags. <laughs> I can't believe I didn't point this out. This is the first time I'm doing a video with our own bags. I have been testing bags for years. Now, if you want to use regular disposable bags, get Ziploc, get Hefty. I like the name brand bags. They're fine. They work well. I have used them for years. No shame, no guilt, do it. If you're looking for a reusable alternative, I highly recommend the reusable bags. I've been testing so many brands. Eventually that led me to like develop our own because these, they're the same size as the gallon size bags. They don't leak. They don't stick together in the freezer. They're affordable. I think they're, they're technically not listed on our site yet for purchase. <laughs> so this is like early. I will email you when they're live. I'll even go back to your freebie and update the link when these are available. Um, but they're like $5 a bag or something. So affordable. Other freezer bags could be like $20 a bag or like $15 a bag. And it's like, how many of those could you buy? You could buy one, but what if you're making 10 meals? It's just so, so expensive. But um, so we finally did develop these. Like I said, when they're available, I'll put that link in your freebie. Until then, I will link to other bags that I've tried that I would recommend. Um, but I love do you love the white? Can you see that these ones are white? We had tested, we have some clear ones too. You might see I have some clear. I've tested like a bunch for our own, but I love the white. Like, don't you think we need these in white too? <laughs> like, do you love white like I do? Um, I think we need to like make our own stands. But for now, let's go with these beautiful white bags, fill them with delicious uh, foods that are all the colors, right? The last recipe is a sa sausage stuffed pepper. And I'm going to wait to stuff the peppers because when I get my hands in that sausage, I'm going to do all the meat at once. I am adding a jar of pasta sauce. Make sure it's gluten-free. This one is has cheese in it. So this would be another recipe. Make sure you get one without cheese if you are 
um, making these for someone with a dairy allergy. This recipe also calls for sliced, uh, grated uh, mozzarella cheese. So what you do is you stuff the peppers, you put them in your bag, and then when you're gonna cook it in your crock pot, in your instant pot, in your oven, these are so good baked. Then you just sprinkle the cheese on top at like the end of the cooking time and let it melt. If you're making this for someone who's dairy-free, just omit the cheese. Like it's so easy. You could use a dairy-free cheese if you have one you like. Otherwise omit it. It's very flavorful. It's gonna be good without it, no stress. But I'm gonna do those when I add all of the meat. That is number 10. I think we're ready to add the meat right now. I'm gonna pull it out of my fridge and then fill these bags in an assembly line. Let's get back to my list so I know what I'm adding to each one. Okay, Make some space. Let's put these over here. The great thing about adding all the meat at once is you do not have to worry about cross-contamination. I am touching the meat one time. It touches my crock pot one time. I'm gonna wash my cutting board and my knife when I'm done. I don't have to keep washing as I go. It's kind of nice when it's just all at once. And the same thing with my hands. I can wash those once at the end. Okay. Let's bring on our meat. All right. The first is chicken. We have our chicken fajitas. If you're making these in the crock pot, you can add the breast whole and shred after cooking. Same thing for the Instant Pot. If you wanna make them on the stove top, I would recommend slicing the chicken into bite-sized pieces before you add it to the freezer bag. Otherwise I would add it raw, but I am going to just like quickly slice ours because it's so great to have a potential stove top recipe. If you need a 15 minute meal, if you're like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna cook for dinner tonight? I didn't plan ahead. I don't know what I'm making. It's like, oh, remember that recipe in the, remember that recipe in the freezer from that lady? Yeah, we're making our chicken fajitas. So I'm just gonna quickly slice this. Otherwise, I do like to just add it whole and shred after cooking. That's a really easy way to save time. Okay. I'm gonna add this behind me and then I'll pull up the next recipe. Okay, Italian pork roast. I am gonna trim the fat from my pork roast now. You don't have to. You can wait until the day of cooking. I'm always trying to save time the day of cooking. So I'm just gonna slice off most of it now so I don't have to worry about it. Sorry, I'm working a little bit fast here. There we go. And then the day of cooking, when you make this, you can either slice it. If you really cook it well, you can um, shred it. The pork is so good with this Italian seasoning. It just makes it makes a big difference. It makes it a different type of crock pot recipe. Very different. Okay. I don't want this to dump. You do not want to see tomato sauce on my floor. <laughs> you probably couldn't see it from this camera angle, but you would see me crying over it. Number three, black bean. Oh, this is a vegetarian, black bean and rice soup. We already added that. We need our chicken for our Cool Ranch chicken. Look at the breasts. If you have, if they're fatty, you can trim the fat. Or like I said, do it after cooking. If they're not fatty, you can just add them to you. As I'm grabbing these, like, can you see I have one dry clean hand and one messy hand? That way I'm really like being so careful about what I touch. Okay. I'm just kind of cleaning as I go. You maybe have seen me add some cans to my recycling bin. The ones that I really need to wash out, I'm waiting till the end. And then I'm just adding the containers of the meat to uh, my, my garbage as well so that my cleanup will be so quick. Okay, this is done. Honey sesame chicken. I think what makes these meals different, so I've said yes, they're raw. 
That's really important to me that they're like so easy to make. Also, no fancy ingredients. I want you to be able to get these ingredients at your local grocery store. I also care about using up all of the ingredients. So there's very left over here today. There's a little bit of spinach. I told you what you can do with that. Otherwise, we use the full cans. I saw a recipe on Pinterest the other day. It was, <clears throat> it called for a tablespoon of tomato paste. And I was like, what am I gonna do with the rest of the can? <laughs> Like, do I freeze it? Do I just throw it away? Like, I don't really have anything to make with tomato paste. So in my recipes, I'm only writing them so that you can use all the ingredients or anything left over, like would be very easy to use up. Let's move on. Taco soup. Yes, I am adding the ground beef raw. You saw it here, folks. I'm adding it raw. This is a very lean beef. If you've never made ground beef in the crock pot raw, give it a try. It's going to change your world. You're going to like it. It's very good. You just cut it up or break it up after cooking. But I think it's even better. It's like almost like a softer texture than browning it. If you have to brown it, go ahead. But I like adding it raw. I think it tastes better. It's way faster. Steak Italiano. I am going to cut up these. I think I'm going to add these uh, whole, actually. They, this is a really nice cut. This is a beef round sirloin tip steak. They look really good. I had ordered my groceries. They did a good job. So I'm just going to add these whole. And then we'll probably cut them or slice them after cooking. They look really great. Really um, trimmed well. And then I'm going to show you... So I have the, the chickpea tikka masala, my vegetarian one, that's done. The last one is my sausage stuffed peppers, which like I said, while my hands are messy, I'm gonna show you that. So this is gonna take a minute because when I ordered, you want ground sausage. One thing, make sure that it is gluten-free. I checked this recipe, this is just sausage. I had checked different brands, this is just my grocery store brand. My grocery store here is Giant Eagle in Pittsburgh. This said gluten-free, so I'm good to make that. But you wanna make sure that the sausage you get is gluten-free. If you cannot get gluten-free sausage, you can buy ground turkey, ground chicken, ground pork. And I have a seasoning mix on my, on my site, thefamilyfreezer.com, for like a sausage, homemade sausage seasoning. You could use that. And then all I'm gonna do is stuff these little peppers with the sausage. Like it's that easy. Yes, the sausage is uncooked. The peppers, I had sliced them ahead of time. I had cleaned out the seeds. It's not perfect. There are still some seeds in here. I was going for time saving. It's re they really don't have to be perfect. And I'm just stuffing these and adding them to the bag with my sauce. These are so good cooked in the oven. Now I have the crock pot directions because they're good in the crock pot. I have the instant pot directions, but if I had my choice, I would make these in the oven. They're just really great um, baked. And if you add the cheese, it tastes so good. Melt it on the top. You could serve it with like a gluten-free pasta, or you could just do a side salad. Um, you could do, we love the zucchini zoodles. We eat those. Lots of options for these. But what I was going to say is if you are, if you know you're gonna make these in the oven, you can freeze them in a pan. I mean, you might want to use a disposable pan because it's going to be in your freezer. It could be in your freezer up to three months. That's how long you can. I always say these are good for at least three months. When I write my expiration date on the bag, I write three months. But um, I, they really don't go bad. I think I've had meals in my freezer up to like six months before and there's no freezer burn. Um, they really last for a long time. Although I'll tell you, my family, like, we will eat them as soon as I make them. So I was telling my husband, I was making 10 meals today. I'm like, oh, we don't need to buy extra groceries this week because we're just going to eat all those 10 meals, <laughs> like, for the next 10 nights. We're just going to eat these. And I bought the side dishes. So the freebie has your suggested side dishes. When I calculated my $128 for these meals, that included the side dishes. I bought the side dishes. I bought the broth that needs to be added the day of cooking so that I would have everything ready to go and just like my life would be simplified for the next few days. So I thank you for agreeing to come to this class because you have simplified my life. <laughs>
the next 10 days, I do not have to stress about cooking dinner. I can wake up in the morning. I just add it to the crock pot. I'll do a cooking demo, I'll show you how it works. But I add it to the crock pot. I'm not gonna get messy that morning. Have you ever opened cans and you're like splashing tomato sauce on you? Or you're like spilling something. You're like, oh, of course, like <laughs> this would happen to me. Uh, you don't have to do that. You're not trying to rush to like go anywhere, get out the door. It's like the cooking is done. And then you know for the rest of the day what you're having for dinner. Seems simple, but oh my gosh, just like the way it can change the rest of your day. And just knowing you don't have to stress about dinner. My 11 year old, she's in fifth grade. She's been doing virtual school at home like my other kids. And she gets done early and she's been wanting to go for a walk. And we'll go around like four o'clock and it's the best. Cause like, oh, it's not like I have to hurry up. I have to be cooking dinner. And oh, sorry, I don't have time. It's like, no, I do have time. It's like, I can, I can make time. And then, you know, we talk about books and <laughs> how school's going and what, what group she's in or class or whatever. But it's just amazing how like whatever you have in your head, like seriously think about right now. What would you do if you didn't have to stress about dinner? Like, would you want, is there someone you want to call on the phone you haven't talked to in a long time? Forget about texting. I mean, talk on the phone. You can talk someone, call somebody, see how they're doing. Um, you can go for a walk. That's one of my favorite things to do. Get some fresh air. You can just sit down with like whoever's inside your house and read a book. I could probably go on and on and on. <laughs> Take a bath. <laughs> Sit down and have a cup of tea, watch a TV show, drive through Starbucks. <laughs> okay, don't do that before dinner. <laughs> but if we're making a list of things that I like to do if I had 30 minutes of time, um, you know, that'd be on the list. Anyway, ask yourself, what are you going to do with that time? Because that is going to motivate you to make these meals and just be so happy about them. Now, almost all my peppers here are stuffed. I'm going to have a little bit of extra sausage. But I'm not going to worry about that. I um, If I was making these not in a live class, I probably would have made sure they were like really fully stuffed. Um, I'm just trying to like quickly put it in. Um, but I think I would have used it all up in this case or maybe even bought extra peppers. But I think I'm just like stuffing these as quickly as I can. And instead of taking some out and trying to redo it, I'm just going to leave it because my husband can cook this up for breakfast. So this is not going to go to waste. I'm not stressed about that one bit. Um, we'll just keep this ground sausage in the fridge for later. But I'm just going to add these final peppers to my bag. And then I will wash my hands so I can seal up, seal up the bags and that's it. Okay. Don't go anywhere. Give me one minute. Now, I know a lot of our members are here today. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Uh, but for anyone who hasn't joined our membership site, I want to show you how it works. Give me one minute because I want to seal these bags and show a tip, share a tip with you. When you're sealing these, here's the trick. You get to your about like maybe two inches from the end of the bag, and then you squeeze the air out. This is how you don't get the ice inside. Okay, it's totally sealed. This is like a vacuum sealer. You don't need a vacuum sealer. You're your own vacuum sealer. I have one and I never use it. It's like, where is it right now? Is it in my pantry? I don't know. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't used it in a long time. There's our fork. I'm gonna seal these up and then I'm gonna add them to my freezer. I cleared out space in my upstairs freezer so I can fit all 12 in there today for class. I do have an extra refrigerator in the basement for the longest time, that's where I put meals. I made 28 meals when I was pregnant with my third daughter. We just had an extra fridge with a freezer on top and I added all 28 meals in there. It, they fit, it was the best thing ever when she was born. And the same thing my son, so when I was pregnant with my son, my fourth child, I ended up making 40 meals, like total overachiever, but I made 40 and we ended up buying a chest freezer. I think when you own a freezer cooking business, you kind of get eventually get a chest freezer. But, um, 
not otherwise not necessary. By the time I had my fifth daughter, I'll tell you, I only made 12 meals. <laughs> oh, I was like, good enough. <laughs> High-fiving myself for even making 12. But for the longest time, I mean, literally years, I was only making five meals at a time, six meals at a time, and they were in our regular freezer, like right upstairs. If you can't fit five meals in your freezer, I want you to look at what's in your freezer. Every single thing that's expired, I want you to throw it away. <laughs> this is some tough love, okay? I'm a bit of a minimalist, but I want you to clean out that freezer. Don't let a full freezer hold you back from making healthy and delicious gluten-free dinners. You can find the space, I know it, or eat that, eat the food. If it's not expired, sit down, make a meal plan for next week, and eat some of that food from the freezer. Then you're gonna have space. It'll make your meal plan for next week super quick and easy. And then you have space to stock your freezer. Okay, I'm loading these in. <clears throat> if you haven't joined our membership site, Freezer Meal Pro yet, I wanna take a minute and literally show you how it works. Like it is mind blowing, it is a one of a kind site. Um, I hope you've had that like light bulb moment where like these meals are going to work for me. And I want to show you what our members are talking about and how they're making these meals work for them. So I'm going to grab my other mic, grab my laptop and seriously like show you how it's done. Okay, this is Freezer Meal Pro. It is its own website. When you log in, this is what you're going to see. And it is the home for all of my very easy freezer meals. Every single one that can be frozen raw. You just scroll down, you can look through photos. But I wanna show you how to use this, especially if you're looking for gluten-free meals. Now, I have so many options for filtering recipes, ingredient, cuisine, cookbook, cooking method, protein, diet. I wanna show you the diet feature because you can sort recipes based on dairy-free, gluten-free, ketogenic, paleo, vegetarian, whole food, which is similar to Whole30. So let's go ahead and look at the gluten-free recipes so I can show you how this works. Now we can choose from all of these gluten-free meals. This turkey, white bean, and kale soup is jumping out at me. Everyone loves this recipe. And if you click into it, you can see the ingredients. Very, very simple. The directions for freezing and cooking and full nutritional info. If I know I wanna make this during my next freezer meal prep session, I would just click add to cart, the little cart icon. Then I wanna go back. Let's pick some more recipes. Now we're in our gluten-free list. Let's say, let me look at some pictures. What looks good to me this week? Let's say I wanna make this simple crock pot sweet and sour barbecue chicken. I love that, my kids love this recipe. Again, really simple, all the ingredients, tells you the directions, nutritional info. Let's add this to our shopping cart and pick some more. You can see like how quickly I'm going through these recipes. Here's some we made today, that tikka masala and the black bean and rice soup. And let's make, I'm thinking this tomato basil soup. That's a vegetarian dish. I love it. So good. So simple. Let's add this to our shopping cart and then I'll show you another search feature. Let's go back to the home screen. And I want to tell you, so my local grocery store has chicken breasts on sale this week. I already checked that out. And I can just search buy chicken. And then we're looking for recipes that I want to make. I'm going to save money by buying that chicken on sale. Let's go with the honey sesame chicken. First recipe that came up, really popular. I would just read the ingredients. In this case, you might need to check. This one says gluten-free. Um, otherwise, you just need to see if it is gluten-free or any substitutions you might need to make. And then you can see this has Instant Pot cooking instructions as well. I definitely want to make this one. I'm going to add it to my cart. And then maybe pick one more chicken since that chicken's on sale. I'm going to make, these are for the grill. I love that idea of another way to cook a freezer meal. It's not all crock pot. You know I love my crock pot, but here's another option. Let's go with our barbecue. And then... 
I want to make, let's go over to cooking method. I am going to pick stovetop because those nights when I don't know what's for dinner, it's like late in the day, I need a 15 minute meal. Let's look for something that would be good for those nights. This peanut lime chicken's really good. Um, but I'm going to do the Tex-Mex beef and cabbage because we already did a couple chicken dishes. This is really good. It's kind of a one pot meal because it uses um, fresh coleslaw mix and black beans, tomatoes, very flavorful. If you like Mexican or tacos, this is really good. And you can serve it with rice. I'm going to add this to my shopping cart. And then let me show you the absolute best part. My members who are here today can says this is like sheer magic. You go up to my shopping list and you will see every recipe that I just picked has been automatically added to a shopping list. And not only is it a shopping list, it is organized by aisle at the grocery store <laughs> and everything that you need to make these meals. Now, I wanna show you a feature. Let's say you need to adjust the servings. You can do that. So I was making a couple chicken dishes because chicken was on sale. Let's say I wanna double it and I'm gonna make two of those. They're good for three months in the freezer, why not? Let's make a double of this barbecue chicken that my kids like. I would just take it up to 12 and that is automatically updating my shopping list. You can also, if you're cooking for less people, maybe you only want to make three servings, half as many. You can do that. It's going to automatically adjust your shopping list. Then whenever you have it set the way you want, you can save your menu. You can also, oh, let me show you this feature. You're going to love this you check off what you have on hand. So if I already have black beans, if I have cannellini beans, maybe I have butter, bags, okay? You check these off so that you know you don't have to get those at the grocery store. Then we'll go to print menu and you'll see what's already checked off. Okay, I'm not gonna actually print it. I just wanna show you the organized shopping list, everything checked off that I have. And when you scroll down, it has all of the recipes. So I literally print this I order my groceries and then I am ready to prep these meals. It literally took me like two minutes <laughs> to plan my next shopping list, like plan my next freezer meal prep session. If you're not a member yet, all you need to do is go to freezermealpro.com slash gluten free. So freezermealpro.com gluten free, no hyphen because that is where you're going to find you can join for a one-time fee. And I mean one time, there are no strings attached. I'm not gonna secretly bill you every month. That's so annoying. It is one time and done. And you will be able to use your membership over and over and over again to save money. You can go ahead and scroll down and just read a little bit more about me and how I got into freezer meals see some photos of the meals themselves, read a little bit more about the membership. And what I want to point out is that when you join, you get unlimited access to all of my cookbook eBooks. Right now you will have 20 instant downloads where you can find my very best recipes. And when I'm writing new eBooks, they are automatically added to Freezer Meal Pro for free. And when I write new recipes for my blog, they're also added to Freezer Meal Pro for free. So you continue to get new recipes over time. And when you're ready to join, all you need to do is click add to cart. Okay, so since you joined today's class, I am going to give you a coupon code and that's simply gluten-free. No hyphen, gluten-free. If you type in that coupon code, that's going to take off 20%, bringing your price down to $77.60, one time fee. Now, if you pay $97, it is totally worth it. Like that is a great deal. You're going to save so much money. You're going to save so much time. You're going to love this. But you took the time out of your day to attend this class. I want to give you that extra savings so you can join for $77.60, two days only. That's how long this coupon is good for. I know people are going to email me next week and ask me if Freeze Meal Pro is on sale. People are always emailing me. Unfortunately, the answer is no. So if you know you want to join, please do so now. Please use the coupon code. I want you to get this like amazing price. 
All you do is click proceed to checkout and you enter your name, your email address, next, billing info, and then check your email because that's where you will find the link to log in to pro. And also that's where I'm going to start sending you tips. I'll email you and tell you what I love about Freezing Pro and how I'm using it. Let's go to the cooking demo. I want to show you how you're going to make these in your crock, crock pot and instant pot after they are in the freezer. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull one out of the freezer. Let's pretend this is completely frozen, okay? This is our honey sesame chicken. What I would do is run this bag under water just for like a minute to separate all the seasonings and sauces so they're not stuck to the bag. Then if I'm cooking in my crock pot, I just like dump it in. Like it can be a frozen block. My crock pot says that. It says you can add frozen meat. It's not an issue. So you can just like put it in. We add the lid. We set the timer. If you don't have a programmable timer, get one. This was like $40. If you have to save up, ask for it for your birthday, do it, please. It's so great because then whether you're at home, you don't have to remember the cooking time. If you're at work, you don't have to stress about it. So I would cook this for four hours. You don't want your chicken to be dry. If your chicken is dry, you're cooking it too long. Do four hours. It'll automatically switch to warm. It can sit on warm for the rest of the day. Doesn't matter. It's fine. Then you shred up that chicken. It's going to be so good. Your family's going to love it. Okay. If you're using your Instant Pot, how does that work? Again, I would just put this under water so it at least separates from the bag. I put it in my Instant Pot and then... The directions are a little bit different, so still super simple, but read your recipe, read your freezer label, because it'll tell you, what I do is I saute for five minutes. That releases that liquid that you need for the Instant Pot to reach pressure. So we saute five minutes, we flip the meal over, and then we pressure cook. It'll tell you how long, this one's 25 minutes. You really need that long to get the chicken to shred, to get that really moist consistency, similar to the crock pot. If you have a roast in here, it might take you an hour. And then I do a natural release. I think that makes the meat extra tender. Okay, can I put this on backwards? Okay, that works. <laughs> okay, that's it. That's, a, that's how easy it is to cook these meals. I just wanna say like, thank you so much for coming today. I have a couple more shout outs, a couple members. So Cheryl, I'm a member, I love this plan. I just have the chicken fajitas Ooh, from the freezer. They were delicious. It really makes the day easier to have a nice meal all ready to make. Great, Cheryl, good job. Carrie says our family loves Freeze Meal Pro. The recipes have been yummy and easy. I love having meals in the freezer ready to go. Thank you for such a great membership. Thank you, Carrie. Mary, I can't thank Family Freezer enough for helping me make meal planning so much easier. I just did 12 freezer meals a few days ago for this month. I'm going to buy a small deep freezer so I can have more freezer meals prepped at once. My family of five, three boys, loves them. Awesome, Mary. I'm so glad you're loving it and using it. Please do respond to my email when you get that freebie. Let me know what you think, how these are going for you. I love when people email me. We get so many emails every day, messages on Instagram, photos on Instagram. I love those too. And just let me know like how they're working for you. I want you to message me and be like, oh my gosh, my family really did love it. Like they ate everything or my one picky eater wouldn't try it, but then she did and she loved it. So send me those stories and they just really motivate me, keep me going. Thank you so much for taking this time out of your day. I really enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot and I'll see you next time.